All right, welcome to the school launch plan and really excited that you're here and you want to learn about leveraging school like we've done to build uh, an online business and monetize your skills, your expertise or your passions. And you may already have a school community set up. You may already know what school is, but I just want to demonstrate a couple of things, first of all, in case you don't. But if you do, just don't skip this video because there's going to be some really important stuff in here. And I really want to talk about the school opportunity and why I've gone all in on this platform, right? So this is going to be a really important video to watch. So don't skip it. So for those of you who are not too familiar with school, I just want to run through that really quickly. Just give me a couple of minutes and then we'll move on to some things that you may not have heard. So first of all, it's a community platform, right? where you can essentially create any type of community. And you can see here, if I just expand this, we've got communities on all types of different topics. So business, health, personal development, spirituality, cars, pets, finance, and you can create a community around anything and everything. Now, inside of these communities, people can join these communities for free. And inside these communities, essentially people can learn things about these specific topics because there's going to be courses hosted inside of these communities, okay? So you've got all these different community platforms that you can join for free or you can start one yourself like we've done, right? And so there's so much opportunity here to really leverage what you understand, your expertise, your knowledge, your passions, because literally you can start a community around anything. Now, what I do want to share with you is the main school community. So this is the school community of school, so to speak. So this is Sam's um, school community. And I just want to walk you through it really quickly just to show you some of the things that you can do with these communities. So right now you can see that there's essentially posts inside of this community, right? So anyone can come in here and they can essentially create a post. So there's 63,000 people. This is growing rapidly by the day, by the way. Someone could create a post, they could come in here and essentially they could select a different category and post it, right? So it's an open forum for people to share, to collaborate and, and to basically come together and talk about school. Now, in addition to that, there's a classroom section, right? Where you can see these different courses that Sam and his team have set up so that people can do some learning and understand about the school platform. Now, in addition to that, if they did have maybe calls that were happening off the back of this community, that would be here, but they don't run any calls off the back of this community so there's nothing in the in the calendar but let me just show you the leaderboard section and this is one of the big things that is really separating school communities from other communities particularly facebook groups right is you've got what we call the leaderboards and this is basically a ranking system so this allows you to gamify the whole process of learning and one of the reasons why i think people love school so much because you can see here that I'm now on level five. And in order to get to level five, I have to essentially get points. And the way you get points is like this, right? So level one, zero points. When you first join a community, you've got nothing. But as you start to comment and engage and provide value, people may start to like your content and then it basically gives you points. And that then starts ranking you in the leaderboards. And this would be really useful inside of your community if you wanted to see like who is engaging, who is contributing, and if you wanted to reward that in some way because you can unlock specific resources at certain levels or like we've done for the last couple of years, give away prizes to like the top contributors. So you can see here right now, this is the main school group. There's 62 plus thousand people in here and we've got a 730 and all-time leaderboard. So right now I'm six in the world. Um, when it comes to this school community, when it comes to the top contributors, right? And so I'm climbing this board because I'm sharing valuable content in here. I'm supporting school members and, and people are liking my content. And you can see here, I'm 13 in the world in the last 30 days and I'm 68 in the world all time when it comes to contributions inside this community. So it's a very cool ranking system that is one of the reasons why people love school the most. So you can see here that you can start anything on this platform, you can build courses, you can have community, you can have gamification all in one place. And this is one of the reasons why school is growing so rapidly. If we go back to the community right now and we look at the membership, like 
It was just last week that this was 61,000. So thousands of people have joined in the last week. It's crazy. So I wanna share some more things with you. If we uh, head back over here, you may be thinking to yourself right now, well, what about a Facebook group, right? Because surely I can do a lot of this stuff on a Facebook group. And, and you can, and we've built Facebook groups too. I've still got an active Facebook group. But to me, there's a lot of limitations with a Facebook group, okay? With a Facebook group, it, it's great to get started. It's free, which is awesome, but it's algorithm-based, right? Facebook groups uh, are based on Facebook, so it's a social media platform. So if you post something, not everyone's gonna see your content. The second thing is there's so many ads and so many noise on the Facebook platform. There's none of that on the school platform. And in addition to that, this is something I'm experiencing right now is I'm getting soft blocked. And basically what this means is I can't add people or I can't message people from from time to time and I can't like and engage. Like they're restricting my account from doing stuff because it's just getting a little bit more sensitive now when people do a lot of activity on the Facebook platform, it's stopping them from, from, from doing it, right? And so it's created a lot of friction. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so pro school is because it gives you all the freedom, all the flexibility, no ads, and everyone sees your content and sees what you do. And so for me, it's just a no brainer. Yes, it's $99 per month, but in my opinion, you're gonna make that back tenfold in the effectiveness of your business when you're building it on a school platform. Now, let's just look at the big opportunity here, right? Because this is, really what we're discussing, the creator economy and the growth curve that's happening right now. So the creator economy is essentially this economy where people are creating their own courses and training and online learning. And this market is booming, right? The traditional education system of people going to university and, and learning it is not as popular anymore. People are seeking alternative ways of learning. And if you look at this right now, this is a an article published by Goldman Sachs, right? A very reputable banking organization. And they predict that this creator economy is gonna reach half a trillion dollars by 2027, which means this market is booming, this market is growing, and online education is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is one of the reasons why the school platform is booming so much. And this is one of the reasons why Alex Hormozzi, one of the biggest people in the info product and education space, made this announcement a couple of months ago that he's just made the biggest investment of his life into school, okay? And he is now the co-owner with Sam Ovens of the school platform. And this is massive news because this individual here is very influential. He's got 2.3 million followers just on Instagram. Across his socials, he's probably got about five to six million followers. And he has built a lot of brand equity and a lot of authority and a lot of trust with his audience. And now he's put his brand and name on the school brand name, right? He's, he's combined the two and he's funneling all of his traffic into the school platform because he believes this is one of the best ways for someone to start a business and monetize their skills, passions, and expertise. Now, he could have invested in a lot of different things because he's got a lot of money, but he chose school and he's a very smart individual, right? He's worth over a hundred million dollars. So if someone like this is going all in on the school platform and he's joined forces with Sam Ovens, who is probably one of the OGs of the consulting and coaching space. You've got two people together that are creating the perfect storm to make this the number one platform in the world for coaches, course creators, people that wanna monetize their skills, their passions and expertise, and which is why I'm going all in on this platform. It's why I believe so heavily in this platform because big authorities are backing it. Now. I've been on it since 2022. So well before Alex Mosey invested in the platform, I was already using it. And the reason why, and someone asked me this the other day is because when I wanted to launch the Remote Coaches Academy, which is a high ticket coaching program for coaches, I was looking at Facebook groups and I was like, these are outdated. They don't do what I want them to do. And I want something that looks more professional, more clean, and more sophisticated and I wanted to stand out. And that's one of the reasons I got in early in school. And I was on school before most people were using school in my space, right? I was using it because I knew it would give me a, a differentiator in the marketplace and my clients loved it and we loved running it. But I wanna share with you some 
other history because I think this is important, right? I've not just been building school communities, but I've been building multiple businesses since 2018. So in 2018, I launched my social media marketing agency, which I still run to this day. And I also launched my consulting agency. And I actually was invited on this trip by my mentor. So this was my mentor, Dave Smith, when I was building my agency and my uh, consulting company as well. Dave Smith invited us on this trip to the Philippines to build homes for Habitat for Humanity and um, this this local uh, group of group of people who we were creating these homes for. And on this trip, um, Dave was actually really looking at like what we were doing versus what he was doing, and he, and he said to us like, "Listen, you've got a set of skills." that I don't have and I've got this business that I want to grow I think we can do some great work together if we partnered up and so Dave suggested that Dave my business partner and I partner up and help him scale his business and so that's what we decided to do so we joined forces and joined Dave Smith in helping him build the online trainers federation which was basically a organization helping online health and fitness coaches scale their businesses. So he was my mentor and then he became my business partner. And when we joined uh, Dave and his business, he had a Facebook group, right? So we've been doing groups for, for a long time, even well before school was was around. But he had a Facebook group that was uh, about 4,000 people. So me and Dave Crawford and Dave Smith and then later Lucy Way combined forces and with all of our skill sets and our knowledge and our expertise were able to scale that free community up to 35,000 people which is huge right it was actually I think the second biggest community in the world for health and fitness coaches so same model that we're following today but we just did it on on Facebook right now when we began it was doing about 50k per month in um in revenue right when it was kind of that smaller group when we scaled it up we were able to generate 1.6 million dollars in a single year from the free community because we were taking people from the free community and ascending people into a paid community right so massive growth off the back of this free community model and so much so that Dave and Lucy were able to collect not one but two click funnels awards so you can see here They've got two awards here for generating a million dollars through a single funnel. Um, and this is what we were able to help them achieve via the free community model. Not only that, my business partner, Dave Crawford, who you'll probably see either in this group or he's in our inner circle, also collected an award here. You can see Online Trainers Federation, Dave Smith and Dave Crawford for actually generating a million dollars through a, a funnel which this traffic came through a free school community. Now, in addition to that, we actually partnered with another business. This is me with my award for partnering with Joel Staley and helping him actually generate multiple millions of dollars with his online coaching business. And he's actually got one of the biggest communities, I think if not the biggest community now in the world for dads who are into to lifting, like health, and um, and weights and, and bodybuilding, right? He's got one of the biggest communities in the world on Facebook. So well before uh, school was around, we were doing all of this on Facebook. Now that Facebook, um, now that school has come, sorry, it's just made it so much easier for us to be able to actually follow this model and, and do it way more effectively than we were able to do before. So back to this, we've been doing it since 2022. And this is something that we understand really well because we're not just coming into this market, teaching people what to do and how to create school communities and monetize school communities. Before we've been teaching people how to do it, we've been doing it, right? So we've done uh, just over $400,000 from this community specifically with, with school, okay? So we've made multiple six figures with a school community before even teaching anyone how to build a school community. And I hope you don't mind, but I just wanna share some things with you that hopefully inspires you, right? Um, and this is not to impress you, but to impress upon you, like what building a school community can really unlock, right? Because maybe you're joining this 
um, the school community and and you're you're looking for for answers in order to to build this life that you want to build right and I love business but I also love life and one of the things that school has been able to unlock for me is the opportunity to to do amazing things and maybe you want to do those things too maybe you want to go skiing with your friends in in Canada in Whistler maybe you want to travel and explore Zanzibar or maybe you want to take your partner swimming off the coast of of Mexico with well sharks which by the way was absolutely insane and uh, an experience I'll never forget or maybe there's some other things that you want to do like maybe you want to get your your dream home and maybe you want to move to a specific location or maybe you you want to I don't know um, hop from Airbnb and you want the freedom to be able to do that or maybe you want to get the finer things in life and like I'm not an overly materialistic person but I I do like to visualize things and I do like to see if I can obtain those things and this is one of the things that I really wanted to achieve I always wanted to have a Range Rover we've got a dog that you saw on the last slide we like to go on adventures we like to go to the woods and we like to be comfortable right and one of the things that having a school community and business has allowed me to do is to be able to afford things like this. So hopefully it inspires you and kind of motivates you to want to get through this course to see what you're able to achieve with your school communities and and your business too. So let's come back to the opportunity, right? The upward trend in online learning. If we look at 2016, 21 million. If we look at 2021, which is multiple years ago, you can see here that it's had massive growth in terms of the demand of people wanting to access online learning. So the curve is just going up and up, right? More and more people want to access online learning and don't necessarily want to go down the traditional route of college and university, right? Which creates a massive opportunity for you, for me, for everyone that are building online education, businesses, communities, and courses. And so if we look at like, what we're delivering to you right now inside of this particular community is we're giving you the first step, right? The first module that you're going to need when it comes to starting your school community and starting your school business. Maybe you've already done that already, but I guarantee there's going to be things inside of this particular free course that we've created that are going to unlock some ideas for you in terms of how to set it up, what to do, and, and how we've been able to monetize school in a very effective way. Then there's going to be a set of people who maybe want more and that's going to be found inside of our inner circle program, which is a paid program. There's going to be a a link down below this video where you can click and fill out an application to, to apply for it. But essentially this is where we offer module two, three, four, five, and six, and all the other different things that someone is going to need in order to build a successful business on school. Now, in addition to the the modules that we're going to be providing in there, we're also going to be providing support calls where people can get real feedback, real coaching, real input, input from experts on all the different topics that are needed in order to build a successful school-based business like we've been able to build. So that's something that you're interested in. Then start with these lessons, go through... Um, this free course and then decide for yourself if like you want to learn more and you feel like actually you know what like I could really benefit from 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 more help then that's definitely something that you could explore too. Now I just want to wrap up if if you don't mind with with the mission here because I think it's important that everyone has a mission and maybe you have one maybe you don't but hopefully this sparks some ideas for you when it comes to creating your own mission but This is our mission, right? It's made up of three things. The first thing is we want to create impact. We want to help people just like you start a school community and monetize their passion, their skill, their their expertise, right? That's why we're creating this community and the inner circle. And then we want to change people's lives. We want to help people create a better life with more freedom and gain fulfillment doing something they love because I've come from a corporate background, right? I, I worked in corporate I didn't love it, right? I left university or college, depending on where you are. I went to the corporate world and I hated my job. I I couldn't sleep a lot of the time because I was so stressed and it wasn't very fulfilling to me. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to start my own business because I wanted to do something I love. Now I get to wake up every day. My girlfriend and partner says this to me all the time is like, you genuinely want to get to work as quickly as possible when you wake up because you love what you do. And it is true. And I want the same to be true for you too. And then the next thing is charity, right? I really got t- touched when I went to the Philippines and back aloud to actually build those 
those uh, homes for, for the local communities. And that's something that I want to continue to support and invest in. And so we've made a pledge to invest at least 1% of all of our profits. And that's a minimum. We'll, we'll probably be investing more, but at least 1% of all of our profits to Habitat for Humanity because I really believe in this organization. I really believe in, in Habitat for Humanity and the work they've done. I spent a week in the trenches building with those guys and it really touched me and I see the amazing work they do. And so I've been able to achieve what I want already. I've been able to create financial freedom. And so I feel like I really owe it to other people to be able to give back some of the um, some of the freedom that I've created to, to other people, so to speak. And that's why we're really making sure that we're giving back to not just our team members, but also other organizations like this that are doing great work around the world and uh, supporting people who need it the most. So that is the first lesson in this module. If you're eager to move on to the next one, then it's ready for you and I'll see you there. I'm gonna show you three different businesses that are currently generating $10,000 per month or more. I'll show you their business models. I'll show you the breakdown of, of the math and the economics of how it works what they're offering, what they're selling, etc. And that's all run through this particular platform here. So if you're not familiar with this, this is School. And essentially this is a course and community building platform. So right now I'm in the main school community. You can see there's 55,000 members. There's over 10,000 uh, communities and courses inside of the school platform right now. But I'm inside one of the, the communities, right? The main community. And you can see here people posting how I made $1,000 on school yesterday. So it's essentially a community and then you've got courses. So in here you can see that it's courses. And if I click into these courses, you can learn about how to use the school platform, for example. Okay, so it's a community and course building platform. Now I wanna share with you three different businesses and ways to get to 10K a month. And my goal is this inspires you, gives you some ideas and shows you how you can take your skills, expertise, passions, interests, hobbies, and essentially turn them into a business. And maybe that's not 10K a month, maybe that's 5K a month. There's people doing all types of different numbers per month on this platform. But in this video, I'm just gonna show you the breakdown of what it looks like to do 10K. So let's just start with an example that I'm most familiar with, which is my own business on the school platform, which is an active business right now. And essentially what I've done is, I've taken my social media, where I've basically generated traffic and I've driven them to my own school community. Okay, and this is a school community. So it's the Remote Coaches Academy. And this is basically a community where I teach people all types of different things when it comes to building um, an online business. So you can see here, we've got a course. We've also got a community, uh, 50, 50 members, including myself. And essentially all I do is I generate interest over here. Anyone that's interested, then we typically have a call because this is a high ticket coaching program. And then if they want to join the community and get access to the training, the coaching, the materials and the support from me and my team, then essentially they'll join this school community. Okay. Now, in order to join this school community right now, if someone's paying on a payment plan, then it's 550 GBP per month, which is uh, 702 US dollars per month, okay? So let's just say though, I wanted to do 10K. So 10K shared by 550. That's essentially just over 18 people that need to be active um, inside of this community per month in order for this to do uh, 10K in USD, okay? So that's, that's one model, right? You simply go social media to paid group via some kind of sales process and you charge a high enough fee where you need 18 uh, about people paying around 550 per month equals 10K, okay? Super simple. So that's the model that I'm familiar with and that's the one that uh, I've been running and how I've actually grown my own school community. But let me show you like a different way of approaching it and a different way of doing it because I'm not super high ticket. Like some people sell for uh, 2000 $3,000 a month. So I'm kind of like mid ticket, I'd say, but you'd class it as high ticket. But you can also do this with a low ticket product, okay? 
So I'm gonna share with you how you could do it with a low ticket product because there is low ticket options and low ticket to me is probably around the $100 mark maybe $110 mark, but typically around the $20, $30, $40, $50 mark, right? So let's just say that's the case. Now, the way to do that, and I'll show you business doing it right now, is social media to basically a free school community. Um, That doesn't really look like school, but (laughs) you get the point. So social media it's a free school community and then over here if we just zoom out a little bit we're going to go to a paid school community okay so social media it's a free school community where there's value um there's stuff that warms up the audience even further and then it goes to like a paid school community now with this model because it's going to be what we call a low ticket offer or low ticket offer we're going to need more people right in this example up here i just need 18 people paying 550 per month consistently to do 10k a month with this offer because it's going to be a lower priced offer there's going to need to be more volumes of people but essentially makes it more accessible because you're um, making it more accessible to more people because the price point is lower because not everyone can afford a high price point but a lower ticket price point is more affordable to people so if i just go to um this person here this is uh hamza let me just actually open up this first of all because i just want to show you the funneling process so actually this is the free community okay so the adonis gang connected like-minded men on self-improvement um adonis gang is hamza's free community for masculine young men on a self-improvement journey essentially so what hamza is doing here is he's taking his social media so his youtube and his socials he's driving people to his free community you can see here it's got 105,000 members and it's growing really fast by the way and then what he's doing is in here he's nurturing these uh these men these young lads and anyone that then wants to ascend up into getting more access more support more help would essentially get the opportunity to join his adonis school and you can see here right now that he's charging 129 dollars per month for that so significantly less than what i charge per month but that actually means that with a big audience he can get like a lot of members so you can see here that he's got 1.7 thousand members so if we just do the math on that for a second so we'll do 1700 and it wasn't always at that price point he's scaled up the price point as time has gone on so 1700 at i think it was 107 let's just go back to adonis school uh 129 okay this is the current price point that's uh $219,000. So $219,000 per month. I would imagine it's probably doing about 180. So 1800 per month. Sorry, 1000. Sorry, 180,000 a month is what I think it will probably be doing because this pricing will have increased over time because noticed here it says, um, it's probably going to say it somewhere that the price is going up. Uh, uh, I can't see where it says it, but I know his price wasn't this price point previously. And so the price point has gone up. So let's just say he's making about 180000 a month from that. So you can see here using this model where it's uh, social media to free community, low ticket offer to his paid community. He's doing at least 180 k Per month so smashing through that 10k a month mark and if i just go back to like what he's offering inside of this you can see here some of the things six figure formula um finding your future wife success mindset and and i know from watching this video i watched it earlier on today that he's got a ton of trainings and resources in there to help young men develop themselves he's got interviews and all kinds of great stuff in there so actual actual really good community ton of value in there and clearly people are voting with their dollars because there's 1.7 thousand people in here right now paying 129 dollars per month so 
I wouldn't call this like super low ticket. I've seen communities that are charging anywhere from eight to 50 bucks that are doing like easy uh, 10K plus a month, okay? So like you don't have to be on that sort of one to nine range in order to do those sorts of numbers. You could be charging as, as low as eight to 50 and still be doing 10K using this model. Now, the next thing I wanna share with you is what I call like a hybrid. Okay, because I promised I'd, I'd share with you three different ways of, of making 10K plus a month on the platform. So the next one is a hybrid. And the hybrid is essentially going to be a combination of mine and a combination of this one, which is the Adonis School. Because this is what I'd class like lower ticket, mine's higher ticket. His is $129, mine's like $700, uh, right, per month. So seven times more if we equate it in dollars, because mine is 550 um, GBP per month. So I'm gonna show you a combination of the two because you can also do 10K a month with a combination of the two. And this is typically gonna look like this, this model, where it would be, again, social media, because you're gonna need some form of traffic, whether it's free social media or um, paid social media from some channel to be able to drive them somewhere, right? Now, in terms of, what this person has done. I'm just gonna share it with you in a second. Um, let me just deconstruct it in front of you. All right, so we're on this uh, community on school, which is CoinPix Army. And this is basically for beginners trying to learn about crypto, okay? Where there's guides, trainings, resources, etc. community and a course. Now you can see here that this is 19 bucks per month. So social media, and then it comes to a like, proper low ticket, I would say, 19 buck per month program, okay, and community. So if we go back to this, right now there's 830 people paying uh, $19. So if we go, I think it was 18 times 19, 1830 times 19, let me just double check, uh, 80, uh, 830, sorry, okay. All right, so that's making 15K a month. So that alone um, is doing 10K plus, okay? It's actually making uh, 15K, right? So that alone is doing 15K. However, there's another stage in this process where this person, Alexander Lorenzo, is doing way more than that, okay? So if we just look at like his like funneling process, he's got social media to his low ticket paid, that's doing 15K. And then what he's got is he's got another community over here, which is also a paid community, which is this one. So this has got 232 people at 597. Okay, so if we come back here, that one's 597. And this is why I call this like a, a hybrid, right? Because it's social media to a low ticket and then to a what you'd class a higher ticket offer, right? So this is essentially funneling people into this high ticket offer. Notice there's there's less people in it. In uh, this one over here, there's 232. Over here, there's 830, because obviously more people are gonna be able to afford this one, so they come into this one. The people that are like, wow, this is amazing, are gonna go and ascend up into this one, right? And join this community. So 597, uh, 232. I think it was 597, was it 232? Uh, yeah, 597232. So that one's doing 138,000 per month, okay? So we're just gonna put 138K. So you can see combined with these two in this hybrid model, this is doing, uh, what about 150 plus a month using a, a hybrid approach where it's social media traffic to basically a low ticket paid community. If people can afford to and they wanna send up, they would pay 597 a month. And you can see here that if you cannot afford coaching, go here. So inside of his community here, where he's obviously got course, community and coaching and support, he's charging a much higher fee than he is over here. And he's basically funneling people back. If I click on that, to the low ticket offer if they can't afford to be inside of the high ticket coaching program. And so you can see through this funneling system here that this is kind of a blend of this plus this. 
And that is three different ways and three different examples of how you can make 10K a month using the school platform. All right, so in this video, we're gonna dive into what I call the school monetization funnel. And my goal is this is gonna give you a big picture view and really the nuts and bolts of how this process works so you can copy what we do essentially. Now, the first thing we need to start with is the niche, right? And it's really important that we understand who we're targeting to really make it compelling for people to come into our world. And so there's gonna be a follow-up video on selecting a niche if you haven't got one of those already. If you have, then this is gonna make a lot of sense to you. If you haven't, I'm just gonna to touch on this briefly, right? Because a niche is essentially a specific group of people who wanna solve a very specific set of problems. And our goal with our school community is to essentially create a solution to help these people go from essentially point A to point B over here, where over here they've got a problem, over here their problem has been solved. And so really understanding who we're targeting, how we're helping them, and how we position the school community as the solution is really important. So if you haven't got a niche already, then there's gonna be a video after this to go through, and that's gonna help you with selecting your niche. If you've already got a niche, then awesome you can proceed to the next steps. So once we've decided on who we're helping and our niche, then we need some traffic sources, right? So if I just zoom out for a second, we need to think about, well, how are we actually gonna get traffic to our school community? And there's various different ways of doing it. And these are the ways that we're using right now when it comes to generating traffic. So the first one is gonna be using free social media marketing methods, right? Using Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, whatever platform has your ideal members on it or your ideal clients on it is where you're gonna essentially post. Maybe you've got an audience already. I would typically focus on where you've already got the biggest social media audience, but also think strategically about where your ideal clients are hanging out because that's essentially where you wanna position yourself. So that's number one, and that's completely free, right? You use the free channels to create free school members. The next thing is you can leverage paid social media. This is something that we do where we run various different ad campaigns, which is essentially like social media, but we're putting money into it to get the reach instead. And that's essentially another way of driving traffic into your community. The next one, and this is one that most people are not familiar with, is School Organic. And this is where we can actually leverage the school platform and the school communities on the school platform to actually drive traffic to our own communities. So this is something that I've been developing myself. This is one of the ways that I'm getting members for our free school community and something that is a very effective method because they're already on the school platform, which is why it's something that you really want to adopt if you're going to build a business on school. The next thing is email. So a big part of our strategy, even well before we were using school, was using email to drive attention because email's amazing because we're not relying on the orga organic algorithm and maybe our post being seen. When you've got someone's email, you can send them an email and they essentially receive it and they can see it, right? So this is a great channel to be able to drive people to your community. It's an it's a incredible channel. If you know what you're doing, then this can drive a lot of new members. And then finally, if you create a great product, a great service, then naturally you're probably gonna get referrals. And there's ways of obviously encouraging and incentivizing referrals. And that's gonna be likely for some people a very good uh, member source and lead source for their school community. So those are different traffic sources. So we've got the, the niche, the traffic sources, and then what we've got next is what we call traffic funneling systems. So these are a set of systems we use to capture attention. And I wanna basically explain these two things and why we use these. So you could send your social media traffic straight to your school communities. That's one way of doing it, but in our opinion, it's not the most effective way of doing it because we wanna collect these things over here. We wanna collect emails, right? And in order to collect emails, we wanna have a very effective way of doing that. And so we've developed what we call a school community growth funnel. And this is essentially a funnel that we drive people to from social media, where it explains what our school community is about, what we do, what we offer, how it works. And it essentially then 
compels people to give us their name and their email and then it directs them back to our free school community. And so this is a email capture tool and something that we can hyperlink across our social media to essentially get people into our funnel and essentially then into our school community, okay? Now, this is really important because like I said earlier, it gives us the opportunity to build an email list and then leverage email marketing to drive people into the school community. So that's number one. Number two is we use what we call a lead magnet community builder funnel. And this is where we have another funneling system that doesn't necessarily speak about our school community and what's and what's in it, but it it basically promotes something that our audience wants, something that's really compelling to our audience. And then a byproduct of them opting into this is they then go into the email list over here and then they get pushed into our free school community. So everything is essentially funneling to our free school community and we use these systems to be able to make it much more effective because when you've got these funneling systems, you can run some little tests and you can see how many people opt into this page and how many people opt into this page. Then you can see like what is the most successful page and funnel that you've got that gets the most amount of people to click and opt in. And that's the one that you're gonna run with and that's gonna be like your main mechanism for funneling people into your community. A lot of people are not doing this. This is something that we've been doing for many years because we've been building funnels. And this is something that I'd highly recommend if you're building a school community. It sounds complicated, but it's actually really simple to install and put in place. And it can make a massive difference to your community growth. And then once we've got these things in place, right? We've got the niche, we've got the traffic sources, and we've got the traffic funneling systems. This is the model that we follow, okay? So we call it a two-step model. And this two-step model involves essentially two steps. We take people initially to the free school community where there's very specific things happening inside the free school community, which essentially nurtures people and creates desire for the paid community, okay? And then we do strategic things in the free community to drive traffic to the paid community. And we personally drive traffic to applications, but you can drive traffic just straight to your paid community if you've maybe got some form of subscription community that you just want people to sign straight up to without maybe hopping on a call via an application. And so the free school community is designed to really nurture those people in your audience who, who essentially want more, more support, more help, more expertise, and if you set it up correctly, this is actually gonna start generating you applications or clients like on autopilot, okay? Just today alone, we've received three applications via our free school community. And they've just come organically via the community because we've done very specific things in there and made it very obvious how to apply for our Inner Circle program. And so you're naturally going to get people just reaching out to you or signing up to your paid community if you set up the right infrastructure in place in your free school community. And then people are signed into the paid one. And inside the paid one, that's where you offer all the bells and whistles and support and all the things that people need to succeed and solve the problems that you help people solve. So that is the school monetization funnel. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, if you've not got a niche yet already in place. There's gonna be a follow-up video for you to go through with a worksheet to help you. Um, if you've already got that in place, then obviously you can skip that video and move on to the next one. What is a niche? It's pretty simple, okay? It's a person plus a problem equals a niche, okay? So a specific person and a specific problem or specific set of problems equals a niche, and that's it. It's no more complicated than that. And I'm going to give you some examples of some niches. I'm going to actually take you through a process of um, discovering what your niche could be. Like I'm going to take care of all that for you. But first, I just want to explain what we're attempting to do here for a specific group of people, right? So a niche is a specific person. And typically, most people are looking for a solution to either get healthier, happier, richer, whatever, right? Every day, everybody wakes up trying to improve themselves or improve them, improve their lives. So they're looking for solutions. So let's just say that 
um, every specific person has some kind of problem or something that they're trying to solve or something that they're trying to fix. And essentially they're trying to go from point A to point B. And over here, their problem is solved. And it could just be as simple as they're trying to get from point A, which is home to work. And that's a problem, right? If they don't have a car, but if they, if they get a car or a motorbike or a bike, then that then allows them to travel from point A to point B and problem solved. That's simply solving a problem for a niche, right? It's like workers who need to get from point A to point B. The solution is a bike. A bike takes them from point A to point B, okay? So essentially that's what um, solving a problem for a niche looks like. No more complicated than that. And we'll dive into this a little bit further. We'll dive into some more examples and I'll share some more kind of ways of thinking about this in a second. But I just want to share some groups with you and communities on the school platform to give you some inspiration in terms of what potential niche or school community that you may want to create. So we're just going to head over there now. So I'm in the discover community section and you can see here that we've got all kinds of stuff. Okay, if I just zoom in, we've got business, health, personal development, finance, travel, pets, cars, we've got all types of different things. So it doesn't matter what you're interested in, what your skill set is, what your expertise is, there's something for everyone and there's all these different categories that we can tap into. So I'm just going to share with you some examples that I found. Um, this one is the travel creators community and there's uh, 1.7 thousand people in this meet other creators traveling the world. So this is for people that are traveling the world who essentially want to monetize their traveling. So you can see here, it talks about making money, um, growing your online following. And this would be perfect for someone who um, is interested in traveling, but doesn't know how to monetize it or doesn't know how to build a following. So this is a perfect niche group for those types of people. And there's 1.7 thousand people in here. So that's one group. Let's go to um, this next category. So the next category is uh, pets. Okay, so I basically went to more, I clicked on pets and I found not a lot of groups, by the way. So if I scroll down to the bottom here, there's only one page. Okay, and I believe there's only 39 in total. I think that's the case. Let me just type in pets again. Uh, yeah, 39 total. So there's not a lot of pets groups. And then the biggest one, uh, 676 members, it's in a different language, so I don't even know what that says. So I actually see a um, big opportunity here to create a group for um, for pets, for dogs, for cats, whatever, right? But let's just click on um, some of these. Let's just go into this one, actually. So this one's got uh, 52 members, dog breeding and veterinary secrets community. Join like-minded individuals who want to take their knowledge and information to the next level. Hasn't got a ton amount of people in it, but this is a paid community for um, 10 bucks a month. So this is generating over 500 bucks per month, um, but that's a paid community. If I just go here and look at um, pets, uh, this is another one. This is actually a paid community. It's got 312 members um doesn't say how much it is because they're probably charging um a fee outside of the platform specifically but let's just have a look for people who want a dog that they can take off leash anywhere in eight weeks this is a private community um for dog training essentially so you can see here that there's some communities for for pets for dogs for training dogs and um this could potentially be a niche that you look into specifically. So the next one I found was Fix the Mix. And this was in the um, music uh, niche or category. This is a community for artists, producers, and engineers who want to achieve pro quality in their music. This has got 24,000 people in it, which is really, really cool. So struggling to achieve the sound in your head, join our free community, which includes... Um, events and challenges essentially so this is awesome and if you would play this video it's going to give you more information more insight more ideas and um, but essentially community for artists and producers who want to develop their skills and so there's quite a lot of different uh, communities inside of the the music niche and category so there's definitely some ideas there if you're an artist or you're skilled in any one of these areas 
And then the next one is art school. So I'm on a mission to help artists learn and grow so they can take their work to the next level and change the world. So inside of this community, there's 3.1 thousand members. So access to life-changing courses, connection with community of artists just like you, live Q&As and special guests. And if you're like interested in any of these like niches and groups and communities, and you want to get more insight as to what is in there and you want to get more ideas and you want to see like, what are they doing? Just request to join, go in there, take a look around. That's going to lead to further inspiration that can then help you with deciding on your own community and your own um, your own school business too. This next one is AI uh, riches. So start, run and grow your AI automation marketing agency in 90 days or less. So this is in the business category and this is all about artificial intelligence. So you can see like there's communities and groups around anything and everything and there is literally no limit to what you can create now this one i believe is the biggest yeah this is the biggest so school's largest most active health and fitness community uh, come for free resources prizes and stay for the people now that's interesting because uh this is 11.7 i've got a client who's got a community on facebook i think it's about eighty thousand, maybe it's a hundred thousand people in the fitness niche. So like these groups in the fitness space can get really, really big because it appeals to so many different people. And so um, this is a, a really good one for anyone who is a health, a fitness coach, a nutritionist, like that would be the the type of group that you would start something, something like this specifically. So you can see inside of this group, you get 200 exercises, full body exercise library, beginner and advanced progressions, autonomy trainings, uh, movement, uh, movement gems equipment list. Okay, nice. And uh, obviously uh, a community of like-minded people. And this is all for free. Okay. So that's another idea for you. And then what have we got here? So real men, real style community. So discover the foundations of timeless style uh, classic grooming and how to be a better man. Member Members get access to professional training and expert advice. So let's have a look. Elevate your image, build connections, celebrate daily wins, learn from others. And you can see that they've got lots of other bonuses from being inside this group. So again, I give that this is something that interests you. Maybe you're a barber. You would go in, join this group, see what's going on. Maybe you're a tailor go inside this group, see what's going on. Like, it doesn't matter what you do, what you offer, what you're interested in. You can create a community around everything. And these are just some examples to give you some ideas. So do a little bit of discovery, do a little bit of searching, do a little bit of research, see what you can come up with and and start collating some ideas. And then you may still be unsure, okay? You may be looking at these communities, not really getting the inspiration you need, not sure what to do, what to create. Uh, maybe what niche to pick. And so I basically created this document for you. And on this document, there's eight questions. There's eight questions for you to fill out, okay? And then below, I've actually filled out eight questions myself so that you can get kind of get further inspiration for when you come to this document and uh, start working on it. So let me just give you some context and we'll go through this together. So what topics and subjects am I genuinely passionate about or, could I, or I could talk about for hours? So list everything that comes to mind. When coming to this document, I wouldn't come into it with just like a narrow focus. I would literally just brain dump, just put everything that you can on it, just list everything out. And then obviously you can refine it later on. But the first step is just getting something on it and and just starting the process, so to speak. The last thing you want to be looking at is a blank document. So just put some stuff on it, just list as many things out as, as you can that come to mind. And then what are my unique skills, knowledge, experiences that I could share with others? Now, this doesn't mean that you're the only one in the world that knows this thing. Um, But for example, right, I used to DJ for 10 years. Now, after a decade of DJing, like I'm pretty good at DJing. I don't DJ anymore, but I used to do it professionally. To me, I could put uh, mixing, DJing, music selection. Those would be unique skills. Now, I wouldn't be the only DJ in the world because there's millions of DJs, but they are my unique skills, knowledge, and experiences that I could put down on this document. So who could be my target audience? So this is where 
you would essentially put down the people that may be relevant to these things that you put down up here. Now, I just want to say though, right, let's just say you do a massive brain dump and you've got so many different things and ideas and skills that you put down. You may have to put down multiple groups of people here. So you may have to put down these groups of people, uh, these skills, knowledges, and passions would apply to, and these groups of pe people, these skills, knowledge, and experiences would apply to. So you might have to segment things based on the fact that you're just brain dumping on this document initially. And then what are my target audience's pain points, interests, and needs? Same principle, right? You might have to segment it based on different people that you may be looking to target. Because again, you just want ideas at this stage. You may have like two groups of people with two um, sets of uh, different problems and two interests and two different needs. And so then you've got like two options, so to speak, and you're going through this process for, for multiple people and multiple niches, not just one. And then later on, we can refine it down and, and just pick one. So you want to put in their pain points, interests, and needs, because this is going to be really important to understand, okay, can I solve these problems? Can I cater for these interests? And can I like satisfy these needs, so to speak? And then what problems or challenges do I see within my chosen niche that I could help them solve? So these are the things that they're coming up against, the, the challenges, the roadblocks, the things that they need to solve essentially. Again, just list everything out. And then are there existing communities or courses in this niche? Okay, so this is where you could basically go to this section here. Let's just say health and fitness, right? Say you're a health and fitness coach. You'd come in here and you'd take a look to see what's in like the health and fitness space. Let's just say um, you come in here and you find uh, this group and this group is one that is one that you want to choose for inspiration. You'd click on this group, you'd grab this and you'd come back to new selection, you drop it in. And that's just going to give you like a, a reference point so that you can come back to these group for, for inspiration later on and maybe further further research, etc. Okay, so you can use the search bar in here to discover communities. Now, you may do a search like um, sewing. I think that's how you spell it and nothing comes up, which means that there's an opportunity to create a group or a community around sewing because no one's done it yet. Um, but it doesn't mean that no one's interested in it because there's plenty of communities and content on the internet around sewing specifically. And if there's nothing here, it means there's an opportunity. But if there's nothing on here, you can look in other places on the internet to get inspiration. Like if you needed to, let's say you were interested in sewing and there was nothing in here, but you needed some inspiration, I would head over to Facebook. I would search Facebook sewing groups and I'd see if anything comes up. All right, so I just did that for you. So I came over here, typed in sewing, Collect, uh, selected groups and then you can see here sewing for beginners 112,000 people sewing for beginners UK 65,000 people um, all about sewing 93,000 people and there's no one that's created a sewing group that I can see here which tells me that all the people who do not want to use Facebook and all the people who are maybe looking for sewing on this platform and not finding it right now. If you create a sewing uh, community, a niche, you would be the first right now based on that search and the terms that I've used. Yeah, over here, there's 65,000 people, 112,000 people, 93,000 people. Imagine if only 1% or 3% or 5% of that many people turned into paying group members or paying customers. Like you can make a lot of money in the sewing market. Um, all right, so let's come back to the niche selection process. We'll get rid of that. Uh, how can I position myself in a, as an authority or expert within this niche? So use relevant experience, okay? So anything that would contribute to you being able to serve this niche, this market, these people with confidence. And again, you may put multiple things down here based on the fact that you're just kind of brain dumping at this stage. And then am I willing to put in the time, effort, and resources needed to nurture and sustain a thriving community around this niche? So this is a test, right? It's a litmus test. If it's like, no, or I'm not, I'm not really interested, then it's probably not the right thing for you to pursue because you want to be interested in it. You want to be passionate about it. You need to make sure it's the right thing in order for you to stick with it long enough to really see success and see results. So I'm just going to come into um, my 
questions and answers here. So I'll just skim through these pretty quickly just to give you some uh, inspiration and some help. So what topics or subjects am I genuinely passionate about and can talk about for hours? So online business, building communities, marketing and sales. So so what are my unique skills, knowledges and experience that I could share uh, with others? So I built multiple online businesses, co-built a group to 35,000 members that did 1.6 mil in 2021 built my school community that's done over $400,000 to date, collected multiple ClickFunnels awards for doing a million dollars through a single funnel. And then who could be my target audience? So people who wanna monetize their passions or skills and turn it into a business. And then what are my target audiences, pain points, interests, and needs? So don't know where to start and don't know how to monetize their passions and skills. And then what problems or challenges do I see within my chosen niche that I could help them solve? So how to package up their skills, experiences into a product, how to build an audience and community, and then how to convert that audience into customers and clients. And then are there any existing communities? Yes, they are. I know that for a fact. And how can I position myself as an authority or expert within this niche? So drawing on my years of experience, building profitable communities and Uh, sorry, on Facebook and school. And then am I willing to put in the time and energy, effort and resources to building this community? And for me, that's 100% yes. So below this video, you'll be able to find a copy of this uh, document. So you can essentially make a copy of it and uh, you can start filling it out. And that's what I recommend doing um, as soon as you finish this video and, and simply just take action on it, right? So the quicker you start doing this, the quicker the ideas are going to come to you, the quicker you're going to start figuring stuff out. So really just take action on that because that's going to set you up for kind of the next steps and make sure that you're moving in the right direction. All right, so let's zoom out just to get clear on what we're looking to do here. So when you pick your niche and you create your school community, that's essentially going to form a solution. And that solution is going to appeal to a specific person who has a specific problem or set of problems. And They're at point A over here. And essentially what your solution, your school community is designed to do is to help them get to point B and get them to a place where their problem is solved. So you're taking someone and we will call them the old person, the old version of them, and you're creating a new version of them and a new person over here. And this is gonna be the vehicle. Your school community is gonna help them get from point A to point B. And that's it. That's all we're looking to do here when selecting a niche. Now, in terms of action steps is take imperfect action. Write the first thing that comes to mind, brain dump it. Once you start getting something on paper, everything is then gonna start to flow and follow. Don't apply too much pressure to yourself. Have fun with this. You may already know what it is, but there's a good chance that you don't, and that's okay. Just put pen to paper and then everything will follow. And then, Don't expect to have like a finished product the first time you do this. You're probably gonna need to come back and revisit your first draft and edit and modify things, okay? And that's all right if you need to revisit, edit and modify, but simply get something on paper and then it's gonna be easy to do that afterwards. And then don't overthink it, right? Don't spend too much time thinking about it because time is so precious and every day counts. And of course, you don't want to rush this process, but the sooner you figure out your niche and your community and the direction you want to go, the quicker you can start your community. And people are starting communities every single day, but there's still so many untapped communities on the platform. And even if someone has started a community, it doesn't mean you can't start one too, because you're going to be your own unique community, even if it's in the same market niche or industry, but people are starting them every day. And you can be one of those People, you just need to take imperfect action, put pen to paper, go below this video, fill out that document and start moving in the right direction. All right, so in this lesson, we're gonna dive into two different things, actually. The first one is the subscription model. And this is where you create an offer where someone is paying you on a monthly basis, right? And this is gonna be relevant to certain people and not relevant to other people. And also different markets and different niches respond to different types of offers, but we'll dive into that. We'll discuss it in a little bit more detail. The next one is what I call a timeframe model. And this is where you create an offer selling a very specific timeframe and outcome for a specific price. And so both of them can work. Um, There's certain models that work better for other people, but also it's about making 
a choice that makes sense to you and how you want to run and operate your business. So we'll dive into both of them and then you can kind of make your decision on which one makes most sense to you. Now I will be sharing additional content on both my Instagram and YouTube if you want to follow me there and check out that content. Now let's just dive into the first one which is what I call the subscription model, right? And this is basically where someone's paying you month to month. There's no specific time frame that you're selling, it's just month to month, right? Now, inside of the school platform, you can actually create subscriptions and payments inside of it. And I'll uh, actually show that in a second, which is pretty cool, pretty easy to do. But in terms of like this approach, you can essentially set it from $1 to $999. And I feel like this model can work if someone has a really big audience. So let's just say you've got hundreds of thousands of followers or subscribers, then you can sell something for a relatively small price point and make a relatively good income. But you need to have a decent sized audience, okay? Because if you don't have a decent sized audience, then you need um, a lot of customers to make any type of real profit and money from your business, which is not realistic for someone with, with a very small audience because at a low price point, you need hundreds if not thousands of customers for it to make sense. And so this model can work, but you need to be aware that it's going to be difficult to make any real level of income if you've got a very small audience. So again, there's going to be various different people listening to this. If you've got a really big audience, this could be the perfect model for you. But if you haven't, then the next model that I'm going to discuss is probably going to be a better option for you. Now, if you did though want to go for this option in a subscription-based model, you could essentially go into the school platform, into the settings, go into subscriptions, click on this button. It's going to take you to this, which is going to allow you to set up a connection between your Stripe account. And then someone could land on your school about page. They could click the basically uh, subscribe button and they could enter their name, card info, and just like that, they're on your subscription. Okay. So it's actually pretty simple to set up. Um, and it may be a model that makes sense to you, but just make sure that you've got enough people in your audience for this to actually make sense. Now, the next one is what we call the time frame model. And this is where you're selling a very specific time frame for a very specific price point, and typically at a higher price point as well. Okay. For example, you could be selling a 90 day program for $2,000. And this is where you're selling a very specific time frame with a very specific set of things that you're going to deliver with specific outcomes for a specific price point, and you're selling it for a one-off fee. Now, the price point is $2,000, but you could go ahead and break that up into monthly payments as well to make it easier for some people to sign up. But that model actually works really well for someone who doesn't really have a big audience. So if you've not got hundreds of thousands of followers where you can get hundreds or thousands of customers by converting a very small percentage into a subscription model, then you're probably going to be better suited for pricing your um, services, your offer, your, your school access at a higher price point, having to generate less clients, but then making a really good level of income from the very small audience that you do have. And this model is very good in terms of this can actually help someone with a very small audience make a very good level of income if it's set up, positioned, and sold correctly. And so you've got those two different models to think about. Again, there's no right and wrong, but I think there's better routes for different people with different audiences. The subscription model is perfect for someone with a big audience. Um, the subscription model, if you price it high enough, may make sense for certain niches, even if you have got a smaller audience. But for most people with smaller audiences and for most niches, it's probably going to be most relevant to position a time frame model, a specific time frame, specific price point, pricing it at a higher price point um, to really make the most per client and deliver the best service per client. Um, and that's probably going to work for, for, for most people listening to this who have got relatively small audiences. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson. So if you're going to follow our model of building a free school community to warm up your audience and to send them into your paid school community, then you may be wondering this same thing that David asked. He asked, 
like what is the difference between the the free community content and the paid community content right and this is a great question which is why i wanted to address it inside this video so i'm going to take you through our process what we're doing my goal is this sparks my ideas for you in terms of how you could go about it too so we're inside of our free school community right now and when someone comes into this free school community we're hoping that they see and read the pinned post at the top of the community so if we click on this right now there's a couple of key things that I want to explain here. The first thing is, it's very clear and concise what the community is for and what the benefit of being in this community is going to be. So that's the first thing. And then we mentioned that there's going to be essentially two different areas um, that people need to be aware of. And that's the community and the classroom. And I'll just zoom in just to make sure you can see this. So the community is where we encourage people to interact, comment, post questions, just like David did so that we can support people for free, right? So there's value in just the community and supporting people for free in the community. The second thing is the classroom where we've actually structured out a free course and I'm going to share that with you in a second and explain the logic behind it where people can actually do some, some learning completely for free. Now, in addition to that, we like to actually gift everyone a resource when they come into the free school community. So you can see here that if they comment this word down below, and you can see some people are doing that here, then they're gonna get access to this, which is essentially a, a checklist, a guide, and is basically this document here, which is gonna talk people through our, a process of, of running a free school community and how we ascend people into a paid school community. And we're following up via messenger conversations, we're delivering the resource for free, and then we're having further conversations with people who maybe need some more support and expertise and help with building their community. So that's a, a nice little way to be able to, to provide and have conversations with people who may want some further support. Now, in addition to that, we're actually leading people to this free course, okay? And so... I believe that this welcome post should really be funneling people into your classroom and your free course. And I'll share with you what we've got and maybe you've come across it already. But if I click on this, and you probably have if you're listening to this, but if I click on this, it basically takes us to, to this, right? Which is our free course. And if I just zoom back out a second, we've just got two things here. We've got the school launch plan and information about the inner circle. And I'll get to the inner circle bit in a second, but if I just go back into this, this is the next logical step that someone would need to take to learn about starting a school community, uh, following our model and essentially monetizing their skills, their expertise, right? And so this is essentially step one in the process of building a school-based business. And the goal of this is to really provide the upfront steps that people are going to need in order to start moving in the right direction and get the ball rolling now logically speaking if someone completes step one naturally it's going to lead someone to wanting step two three four and five right because this is essentially a snapshot and a sample of the bigger picture right and so this gets people moving in the right direction and then logically speaking if people are going through this and they're like okay cool i want more support i want more help in this area in this area to, to grow my school business then naturally that's going to lead people to clicking and applying for our inner circle and so this should be actually positioning a couple of things your expertise your authority building trust through the value that you're giving and then cr creating demand for your paid community right and if you do a good job here if you if you set the right things out in in a logical sequence then people are just going to send into your paid, commu paid community very naturally. Now for us, we're going via an application and people are literally just going through this, going into the community and filling out applications on their own without us having to essentially lift a finger, right? Other than we created the course materials, we're helping people in the community and naturally they're finding the link and then they're submitting an application. Now you could go via an application process or you can go straight to your about page if you're selling, let's say a subscription um, or sorry, if you're going down a subscription model of getting people to just sign up on a lower ticket monthly amount, that could just take people straight to your about page where they can click and purchase. But for us, we have a application process because we're taking calls and, and making sure people are a good fit for our inner circle before we um, enroll them into our program. 
Okay, so that's our process specifically. So you can see inside of the um, free community, we've essentially got value that's happening inside of the community where we're supporting, helping, giving advice. We've got some free resources here, like instantly in the welcome post. And then in addition to that, in the classroom section, we've got a course here with like a lot of value. Like if you look at this lesson, for example, this is uh, almost 20 minutes long and it comes with a worksheet where people can complete this and they can figure out their niche. And also there's some examples here of like what those answers look like. So we're not holding anything back here. This is the first logical step in someone's journey to building a school community and and creating a, a business on school, right? And this is naturally just gonna lead to demand for the next set of steps. So I wanna share with you really what that looks like and what is the difference between the free community and, and the paid community. So the first big difference in my opinion is this. So if we go to the calendar, we're now in the, the paid community, the inner circle. You can see here that we've got four calls lined up. So we don't have this inside the free community, but we do in the paid community, right? And in the circle, we have a call on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. So this is where our members are able to jump on a call with me and the team and essentially go through all the things that they need in order to be able to build their free and paid school communities. So we've got a school building call, we've got a tech funnels and ads call, a copywriting call, because that's obviously gonna be really important when it comes to building an online business. And then we've got a health and performance call where we talk about nutrition, health, habits, behaviors, etc. to really just perform and feel really good when it comes to, to building a business and just going through everyday life. So access to experts, access to feedback, access to support, access to everything essentially someone is going to need when it comes to their, their business and making sure that they're on the right path. Now, in addition to that, if we go into the classroom, you can see that we've not just got one little module, we've got everything that someone needs to succeed with a school business. So inside of the free community, it's essentially step one, right? Just getting started. But inside the pay community, we've literally got everything. So we've got all the infrastructure on what to do and how to create a free school community funnel. Then we've got all the templates and, and guides on our lead capture and nurture systems. Then in addition to that, Everyone's going to need traffic, right, in order to funnel people to their free school community, in order to ascend people to their paid community. So we've got individual masterclasses and trainings on the different platforms that you can use to actually leverage to drive traffic to your free school community. And then if people want to actually scale up even quicker, we've got paid social media traffic trainings. So meta ads and Google ads where people can learn how to actually grow their groups faster by leveraging the power of paid traffic. Then in addition to that, we've got the paid school community module where this is where we show people how to set up and manage a paid school community like this one, because it's very different to what you would do inside a free school community for obvious reasons, right? And we've developed a very specific set of infrastructure to make sure it's running smoothly and effectively and really it's efficient so that it drives results for the members. And this is something that we've developed over the last two years of actually running school communities. Then we've got our tech training. We use this specific piece of um, technology called Go High Level. We've been using it for about four years. And the cool thing about coming into here is people can get our templates that we've taken so many hours to build. They can just preload that into their version of this if they wanted to. And it just speeds up the process of getting all the infrastructure they need. We've got a health and performance systems module. And then we've got all the live Q&A call recordings. Now, in addition to all this that I'm sharing with you, we have got specific experts on specific topics speaking inside of this community. So it's not just me. And you don't need um, to have this full scale team. But because I've been in business for a long time, because I've got a lot of relationships and network, and because I know that there's certain areas that I'm not skilled in, I wanted to make sure that people get access to the best possible skills, knowledge, and expertise, which is why I've partnered and brought in other people who are experts in their field to be able to teach our members exactly what to do when it comes to building a school community. So 
hopefully that gives you some ideas of the difference between the two and gives you some contrast, right? The free community is a sample of what you offer and what you do. It's to get your audience warmed up to the idea that you can help them solve the problems that they have. And then in the paid community, it's everything, the full bells and whistles, all the different steps that someone needs to succeed and solve their problem. And if you set up the free community correctly, people are naturally just going to ascend very effectively into the paid community. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to dive into the course planning system. And this is my system that I've used to build multiple courses and probably over 500 plus videos at this stage. So simple, very easy to do. And uh, it's a free system. We're also going to be leveraging AI. And I'm going to show you how to leverage uh, a specific AI tool to help you with your course creation process. So if you're like, Alex, like, I don't know what to create. I don't know what to put into a course, don't know how to structure it. Then we're actually going to be leveraging a tool to help you do that. And then also I'm going to dive into some tech and tools and um, really what things to use when it comes to creating your content. Some things that I've been using, some places um, to go, some, some, some resources, and uh, some best practices when it comes to, to creating course materials. As always, if you want to be updated of any exclusive things and announcements, then please subscribe to the newsletter and you'll be on the list. And then if you want to get access to exclusive content, you will find that on my Instagram and also my YouTube channel if you want to subscribe to those things too. And if there's anyone that you think could benefit from this course, um, these, these trainings, these lessons, and, and you think, actually, you know what, like this person really should take a look at this, then feel free to share it with them and um, let's create more impact together. All right, so I'm going to show you my course planning system and this is essentially it. It's nothing more than a Google Drive spreadsheet. So you sim simply would create a Google Drive account, create a Google account, create a Google Drive account, and then you can essentially create um, Excel sheets like this one, um, but you can essentially copy mine. So I'm gonna give you a link to be able to copy it. And so when you open up my link, you would simply come to file, uh, make a copy, and then you would essentially save it to your Google Drive. And then you've got a copy of this and you can edit it. So you won't be able to edit my document, but you'll need to save a copy on your site. And then once you've got a copy, like it's really simple. And this is just one way of doing it, by the way. Like there's, there's multiple different ways of, of planning out course materials. You may have a way already. You may have already done this before, or you may be starting from scratch, or you may not want to do a spreadsheet and you may want to do it in a different way. I'm just going to show you from experience what has helped me build multiple courses, uh, do over 400 videos and course materials. And I simply just did it in a spreadsheet like this. So this is typically how I uh, plan things out, right? So I'll come up with the with the course name, which is the school launch plan. That's what I'm uh, taking you through at the moment. And then essentially I'll sort it into modules. So module one right now, start schooling, and that then goes in here. And then underneath it are all the individual lessons. And so typically I'll sketch these out and I'll, I'll draft them out initially. And maybe this won't be the fi final terminology that I use, and uh, I'll come back to this, I'll edit it, but this is gonna be like my master sheet, so to speak, that I build from. In fact, there's something here that needs changing already. So the original name for one of the lessons was Big Picture, and now it's Helicopter View. So I'm actually gonna change this because this is now uh, Helicopter View, okay? So you can see that you can just edit this on the fly. So if you come up with basically some less names, but you want to change them, then you can definitely do that as you go through this process and what I often do. So we've got the um, we've got the, the lesson names here, and then we've got the notes. So if you simply just want to type up notes, maybe you just want to create some bullets, um, some ideas and brainstorm, you just click here, you go comment, and then you'd essentially just write your notes here. And you could just like bullet out like um, some notes here, some things that you're thinking about, some ideas for the individual lessons, and just a bit of a brain dump so that you've got like a starting point for each one of the lessons. And then you just put reply, and then it's just going to appear there. And then typically what I do is I will shoot videos. So let me just copy that because I'm uh, wanting to keep the same formatting. So I'm just going to have video. And then if I create like a document um, to go with a lesson, I will put that here. 
okay? So what I mean by video and document is this is where I'll hyperlink the um, video and hyperlink the document, okay? So I'll show you an example of what I mean. So I just recorded this video using uh, this piece of software called Loom, which is what I'm using right now, and uh, is how I screen share, I get myself in the corner, and um, also I'm able to record my voice all at the same time. And so this is the tool that I'm using. And what I do is I shoot a video using Loom, which I'm using right now. As soon as I finish shooting the video, it's then gonna take me to a page that looks like this. And then I'm just gonna click on share video and I'm gonna go copy. And then I'm gonna take that to my um, course planning system. And then what I do is I hyperlink the video, okay? Now, this is actually a raw video right now. So this video is not the video that I'm gonna put inside of school. I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna download it, and then I use a piece of software called um, CapCut. So I'll just share with you what that looks like. So this is that piece of software, it's called um, it's called CapCut. And essentially what I'll do is I'll import that video that you just saw uh, over here. So I'll import it to CapCut and then I'll chop it up in CapCut. I'll cut mistakes out, I'll cut errors out, and that'll kind of be my full uh, edited, polished version that I'll upload into um, the school community afterwards. Um, so I can talk more on this later on, but essentially I just wanted to walk you through my process. And then if, um, if I've got a document to go with the lesson, so I know for a fact, uh, for niche selection, there's a document for this. So I'm just gonna go copy, paste. And then in my Google Drive folder, I've basically got creators and community, I've got course materials, and I basically just created a folder and I've put those things in. You can see the, the course planning system this document is also in here too. So this is like my back office, so to speak. So you've got the niche selection um, niche selection uh, document. So essentially if I click this button up here, so if I just move this out of the way, you can see here it says share, and then anyone with link can view, because I wanna share this with, with you guys who are, who are going through the course. If I click copy, and then I come back here, I can essentially insert link and then that's hyperlinked as well. So if I click on that, that's gonna then take me to this document, okay? So super simple, nothing too complicated there. Yeah? And so that's why I'm using this document is I'm adding any uh, any docs and hyperlinking it to the lesson. I'm writing notes. Um, I'm attaching the raw videos just so I've just got an archive of it. And um, this is where I'm building everything out. And so this is like the starting point and how I'm like creating this course right now in a, in a sheet just like this. And I'm just building it as I go. And then once I've created uh, the content, it then will uh, get uploaded into, into school, into the platform, which I'll, I'll show you later on, okay? So I just wanted to show you step one, which is, which is basically using this uh, document to plan everything out. And I typically, um, just like build as I go, so to speak. So you see module two, module three, module four, module five. Uh, right right now, there's nothing there. I'm just tackling this uh, first module right now, but on my, my actual sheet, I've already planned out what these things look like. So I've got a vision of what everything is gonna be, and I've got it all planned out. There's gonna be lots of iterations and changes, but right now, as I'm shooting this video, I'm just focused on getting this module done. And then once this module is done, I'm gonna go and upload it into the school platform. And I'm gonna show you some of that um, in practice in terms of how it works in a second. So really simple is uh, below this video, you'll be able to uh, get access to this document provided you're in the creators and community, uh, community right? Um, but below this video, you can click on it, you click file, you go make a copy and then you go save and then make sure you've got a Google and Google, uh, sorry, Google account and then Google Drive and then you can actually save this inside of there. Okay, uh, and that's the tools that, that I use for actually planning and, and creating the content. Now for me, um, like I've been building courses and content for a long time, so it comes natural to, natural to me, I know what I wanna create, I know what order I should be creating things in, like I know what sort of flow to take people through when it comes to to a course, um, but you may not have the same experience at this stage, and so we can actually leverage this tool, an AI, so this is um, 
chat GPT. And you essentially would go to this URL here. So chat.openai.com. And this will take you to this. And this will essentially help you brainstorm some course materials and ideas. So I'm just going to show you um, some prompts that you can use to help you with your uh, course creation process. All right, so I've just scripted this up and um, this is essentially what I'm gonna ask ChatGPT. And this is what we call a prompt. And this might not give us exactly what we're looking for, um, but this is a starting point and then we can take that and uh, we can see if we need to modify or change anything, which we probably will have to do, right? This is just um, a bit of a assistance. It's not necessarily gonna give us a finished product. So I've put in my niche is women who wanna lose weight and I wanna create a course with six modules and inside the six modules, I wanna have six lessons. And then I've put uh, the lessons should be on topics to help my niche solve their problems. Please draft up the six modules in logical order with five lessons in each with a short description of what each lesson, uh, lesson should include. So we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna have a look at what this creates for us. So you can see that it works pretty fast and um, it's given us something to work with. So let's have a look at the first thing. So first module is understanding your metabolism. Second module is nutrition fundamentals. Third module, setting realistic goals. Fourth module, understanding emotional eating. And then fifth module is the role of exercise. Actually, that's not module, that's lessons. Ah, there we go, I missed that bit. So module is understanding your body and uh, weight loss basics and then everything that I just read out, which is the lessons. Okay, perfect. So this is pretty solid. Uh, so we've got module one there. And then down here, we've got module two, nutrition and meal planning. Module three, which is uh, exercise and fitness. Um, and then it hasn't given us any more. So we asked for six modules and we've only got three. So what I would say next is please give me the next three modules. But see how incredible this um, piece of software is. Like literally in a matter of minutes with a simple prompt, we were able to get all these modules, all these ideas, and essentially a framework that we could use. So next module is uh, mindset and motivation. The next one is hormones and women's health. And the next one is long-term success and maintenance. So you may go through this and um, you may disregard 50% of it and maybe keep 50% of it. Or you may go through this and um, keep all of it, but then make adjustments to each one of those things. But you obviously want to speak on topics that you understand, that make sense to you, that you're you're experienced in, um, that you have knowledge about. So you could even put in prompts in here where you would say, um, please leave out anything to do with medical conditions or please leave out anything to do with emotional eating or please leave out anything to do with this or um, please include specifics around um, intermittent fasting or please include things around the ketogenic diet. So you can also like add in um, extra prompts to tell it what your expertise are and to help you with creating the, the content that's relevant to you. So let's just say, right, um, we go with what we've got here. The next thing I would do is I would take this. So module one, I'm gonna come back to my course planning I'm gonna basically duplicate this just to show you what I would do here. And I'm just gonna put in uh, your course like that. And um, we'll leave this blank for a second. We'll get rid of these things from here. And then module one. So we can basically type that in there. And so we've got our module one here and we'll maybe call it like a weight loss uh, course. Okay, just something generic and let's just fix that. Okay, weight loss course. So let's come back to this. So we've got that. We would take this. Let's just say, 
let's just say we decided to go with that, understanding your metabolism. We'd come into the notes section here, we'd type in notes, and we could come in here and we could take this and add it here. And I would essentially go through all of this, pick out the things I liked, um, disregard the things I didn't like, and I could essentially use this to help me with like structuring out like a, a draft version of the course. Okay, because I've got my six modules there. I would add uh, the sixth in here like that. And I'd essentially copy and paste uh, everything over. And again, then with the notes uh, here, you could then go ahead and move on to the next step, which it's entirely up to you how you want to shoot the content. Um, how you want to deliver the content. But once I've got this, I then transfer um, my ideas and um, the the lessons into a slide deck and I do that on Canva. So I'm just going to take you through that process just so you see my, my whole kind of creative process. And again, like this is just my process. You may have your own way of doing things. You may not want to do it the same way. Uh, you may want to do it very differently and that's okay. I'm just giving you a starting point of, of what this could look like. But a couple of tools here that you definitely want to be using is um, some kind of place to, to organize everything like I did, ChatGPT, using that to help with your ideas process. And then you need some, some format in order to be able to deliver the content. And what I like to do is I like to screen share, as you've seen already, and, and go through a slide presentation. So I'll show you how I do that and what tool I use. All right, so I'm on the tool that I use, and um, I literally use this every day, by the way. Uh, it's called Canva.com, and um, I've got a premium account, but you can actually use a free account. Obviously, it's got limitations. If you use the free account, but with the paid account, you can obviously do much more. Um, and I use this, presentations, and I build my presentations here. And the cool thing about this is you can search the designs. So I could come in here and go like tech and um, it's gonna give me like some tech designs uh, and styles. So we'll just, uh, sorry, layouts. Let's go tech. Um, nothing showing up there, but we have got um, tech templates, so to speak. I could put in uh, music, creates like uh, music templates. Uh, and designs, um, etc. And so if you play around with like these features over here, you can essentially get some like designs for your presentation, um, or you could just come up with, with your own kind of design that you want to use specific. Now, if we just look at like my presentation fully zoomed out, this is what it looks like. Okay. So I've got the entire module, um, here all like scripted out like this, and I've just basically put in these to break up each video. And then I've just got like a mental note here that this is video one. And then when we get to um, down here, video two, and like I've just created a simple design. I basically just selected um, the backgrounds, just went, selected that background. And then I basically just put that white bit over it so I could put the text over it. And then you can see here that I've just come in, I've selected this text and I've used the same text throughout just to make it look congruent. So I basically chose this one, 40 for the titles. And then I came in and chose 30 um, for the like subheadings. And then you can do all um, types of things like upload images, etc. So all the images and stuff that you see inside of my slide deck it would essentially be stuff that I've grabbed from the internet or images that I've got myself. I simply click upload and then I can bring it in here. I can resize it, etc., etc. right? And so this is basically how I shoot my content is I do screen shares, but also I do screen shares of websites and, and, and different things. But this is not the only way of doing it. You could do it this way or you could create, um, you could use a, another presentation uh, toolkit or software, or you can just speak directly to the camera. And you could just do that through, through all of your videos if you wanted to. Like I've seen some courses where people are just speaking directly at the camera um, and that's it. There's no presentation. I've also seen people write out their course materials and there is no like video. 
Um, so there's lots of different ways to do it. You don't have to do it one way. You do it whatever way makes sense and feels good to you. This is just my way and how I do things specifically. Now, in terms of like tech and tools, right? I've shown you a couple of things already, which is um, chat GPT, um, openai.com. And that's one tool that, that you can obviously use to help you with the course creation process. Another one is Canva. So this is where I do my slide presentations and slide decks. And then the other one is uh, loom.com. So I use essentially this to shoot my videos, record my videos, etc. And so this is also another tool that I use. And then in terms of the, uh, the video is when I started out creating content, I didn't have like a, a HD camera like this one, which I'm filming this on. I didn't have like these backlights. Um, I didn't have this mic. I just had something like really basic. Um, I'm actually going to find what I, uh, what I used one second. Yeah. So I, I've got like a Sony camera right now, but I, I use this for so long. And, and when I travel, I still use this. If I just open this up, um, it's basically like a Logitech camera and this Logitech camera is pretty good. I think it's like 60 bucks. Um, it's it's relatively cheap. Um, let me just go and check what it costs. Okay, it's a little bit more than I, than I remember, um, but it is 74 pounds, which is probably about 90 bucks. But this is basically the camera that I was just holding in my hands right now. And um, this is what I use to shoot content. But hey, like if you've got a, a Mac, or you've got a computer or you've got a mobile, you've got like an iPhone on an Android, you can actually shoot the videos if you wanted to on that, if you're just speaking straight to the camera, excuse me. Or if you're doing screen shares, you can simply just use the uh, camera that's on on the laptop itself, take imperfect action and start from somewhere. I didn't start with like this. My first videos were just on the on the laptop, then I upgraded to like a, a Sony camera, then I got like the mic, but as long as you've got uh, something where people can see you and hear you, then then awesome, like that's a good starting point. And then you can start upgrading to, to more fancy stuff, but I don't believe like there's a specific like mic or a specific camera that's gonna lead to anyone's success. And again, it's just preference at the end of the day, what camera, what mic, what tools, what tech you, you use, but you just need to be able to record your voice, um, record yourself, uh, record your screen. And I've just given you the tools necessary to be able to do that and, you, and you're good to go and you don't need to really overthink it any more than that. All right, so let's just say you've um, created a piece of content, right? Um, a lesson and you want to add it, add it inside of the platform. I'm just going to come in here and just show you what this um, what this looks like and how to do it. Now I'm going to be doing a full click by click build out and going into more detail of how to do things, how to create things. But essentially, I'm just going to show you this section here. So you'd come into the classroom, you'd come into this section here, and essentially you'd be able to put in um, some text like this, and you can put in any text you want. Okay, so you can see there's some text in here already. And essentially, once you've created a video and you want to upload it to here, then essentially these are the different platforms that you can uh, connect the video from. So you're going to need a link from YouTube, Vimeo, or Loom. Okay. Now, what you essentially need to do is you need to create the video and then you need to either upload it or simply if you've got the Loom video, you can essentially attach it um, really simply and really easily. So what I personally do right now is when I've created my video is I upload it to Vimeo, I get a link and then I put the link in here and then and then it's done, okay? So I'll just show you my process of what that looks like, um, but you can also just upload it to, to Loom, host it on Loom and then um, attach it here. But I just like the look um, when you add it into Vimeo because you can add a thumbnail to it and then you can load it in. Plus the reason I like to use Vimeo over YouTube is if you add a YouTube video, then um, when it plays inside of the platform, it then suggests other YouTube videos underneath and it can like take them away from the course. And, and I personally don't want that to happen. So 
we upload things to Vimeo. So I'll just show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna to go to the platform. All right, so I'm in Vimeo right now. Uh, they do have a free and they do have a paid version. Obviously with a free version, there's a limited amount of videos that you can upload. With a paid version, you have to, um, sorry, with a paid version, you get uh, more storage, so to speak, like most of these uh, tools will offer. So let's just go in here and we'll go to downloads. I've got this very short video here and I'm just gonna wait for this to upload. And once this is uploaded, I'm then gonna be able to add a thumbnail, okay? And I'm just gonna take a thumbnail. I'll just show you like how I'd create a thumbnail for a video, um, just so you can see it. So I'm gonna go over to Canva and create that. All right, so I'm in Canva right now. I've got basically some templates in here. I can just duplicate it if I didn't wanna lose the old one. And then I can basically like name the video. So I'm just gonna put in like demo video. Okay. Uh, then I'm just gonna move this out the way. I'm gonna go to share. I'm gonna click on download. Actually, did I select the video? That one, download. Ah. Let me just move this out of the way. I'm just gonna select the one I want, which is 11. Otherwise it's gonna download all of the, uh, the different images, which I don't want it to do. All right, cool, so we've got that downloaded. So now I can come back here, click on uh, thumbnail, upload thumbnail, and you can see here, demo video. And then when I upload that, it's then gonna give me the option to select that. Okay, there we go. So we've got demo video and if I play it, then you can see there's a video of me. Now it is optimizing at the moment. So we'll just wait for that to optimize. We'll just give it a second. Okay, great. And then if we play it, we've got that demo video. And notice the setting that I've got here. So I've got it under hide from Vimeo. So I'm gonna click on share. I'm gonna to go to copy link, and then I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna paste that link in. And then, voila, we have our video. Uh, oh, actually I need to press save. And then come back up. And then you can see we've got the video there. That's it as simple as that. So again, you can use uh, YouTube. I don't personally like it because it will then lead people to other YouTube videos. You can use Vimeo, which we use, or you can upload to Loom or uh, Wista. I like this because I can put in like the thumbnail and then it just makes it look nice and clean inside of the uh, school platform. All right, so in this lesson, we're gonna do a full free community build and we're gonna go through all the different settings uh, and things to put in place when it comes to building your free school community because this is gonna be very different to how you structure a paid school community. So I'm just gonna go through all the different settings. Let's just zoom in a little bit so you can kind of like see um, all these different things that we're gonna click into. And um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to set up a school community if you haven't done so already. So if you click the link below this video, it's basically gonna take you to a page like this and you'll be able to sign up via my link. So if you sign up and you go into the community, there's gonna be nothing there, right? It's gonna be completely blank. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go into settings and essentially you just wanna send down from, from the top, essentially, right? And we'll go through this step by step. You may need to kind of pause this video as we're going through the process and just tick, thing, tick things off as you go. So the first thing we wanna do is just go to general and this is where you're gonna put in your community name. Now, if you're in a free trial, you won't be able to change the URL until you're out of the free trial, okay? So group name, you can put that in and you can change this afterwards. The next thing is your group description. So this is where you just put in a description of what your community is, what it's all about, etc. cetera. Um, and then that's it really when it comes to what you're gonna type, but then what you'll need is an icon and a cover, okay? And so you can click on this and you can change it. And there's some ways that you can create these. Um, obviously you can just go into Canva or maybe you've got some graphics or 
maybe some things set up already from any businesses or business ventures you've you've already created but let me just go into uh, canva and just show you some ways that you could actually get some icons and um, get some get some initial things that you can put here in these different sections so i'm just going to press pause and i'll go over to canva all right so i'm in canva I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second and you can see here that i've got uh, this which i'm using for the the logo that you see inside the community right which is which is this and then if i actually duplicate this and i go to my home and i click on this this is basically the school cover and i used um basically this so if i open this a new tab it's basically called adobe um firefly so for some reason it can't open it but i basically used this piece of software in order to create um my particular uh, icons and uh the cover photo but you can actually create it inside of this the the canva platform as well so if you come up here and um you just type in like logo i believe this is how we can do it yeah perfect so you can see here if you type in logo you get some options here and you could obviously take any of these options customize them and make them your own but if you actually go to a home and you type in logo here it's actually going to give you some more um, options okay let's click on logo blank and then search logo templates so you could put in like tech and it's going to give you like these type of logos right so let's just take that one for a second now let's just say your community is called um fresh tech i'm literally just making this up but i just want to show you how easy it is to actually create something okay perfect fresh tech i'll probably delete that and that's it right that could be what you then just click download and um basically replace this with okay as simple as that so I basically followed that same process, but using Adobe um, Express and Firefly, but same principle inside of Canva. You just come in and you go into that setting that I just showed you there. You can come up with kind of some cool looking uh, logos or graphics, and then you essentially just want to create it in uh, this format, which is like a, an Instagram uh, template. That's what I used. And then you basically want to create uh, one of these as well which is in a slightly different um, dimension so to speak so I think I believe if I go to the settings of what this was specifically if I go to the home screen it was um, probably like a YouTube thumbnail that was probably the setting so that's what you can use when it comes to essentially setting up uh, these two things okay I wouldn't spend too much time on this um, but again obviously you want it to look cool you want it to look professional if you already got a logo then it's going to be pretty simple and fast for you to set that up okay so that's the general section icon and uh, the cover then we're going to dive into subscriptions so this will be something that you don't need to to change because if this is a free community then you're not going to put um a, a price against the community this is only something you do with a with a paid community so you're going to skip that step and then the next thing is categories so you can see here that we've got these different categories and i'll show you what these actually do so inside the community you can see ask and if i click on that it's going to pull up all the posts where someone has selected ask if i click share it's going to pull up the posts where someone has shared something and then the wins you can see there's a couple of posts there already right so how this works is let's just say i create a post here inside the community i'm able to go and select a different category that's that's able to land in and this is just nice to be able to organize the content that's inside the community so essentially you just want to set up some simple categories and you can literally just copy the ones that, that i've got or make your own so if i go to settings i go to categories you can see here i've got ask share and wins and this one is in there as standard so if i just come edit i basically just put ask and i dropped this in there too i'm actually gonna um, put the text and any text i'm using below this um below this video so that you can access it really quickly um, but essentially you want to have those types of categories in there if we go to categories 
So ask, share, wins. I think they're really nice, relevant ones for any community. But again, choose what makes sense for you so that you can get people to organize content correctly inside of your community. All right, so the next thing we're gonna move on to is the plugins. Uh, this is where we get a little bit more sophisticated, but this is one of the reasons why I love Sculpt. So if we go into auto DM new members, we wanna turn this feature on, and basically this sends an automated DM to new group members. So if I go edit, you can see that I've created like this custom message here. And this is a very specific message, and this is part of my nurturing process. Now, if you read this, it's gonna tell you that it sends DMs within about one to five minutes of someone joining. So I've just actually accepted someone into the community, so it probably sent them a DM. Let's go have a look. Yeah, there we go. So you can see there's the DM that was on that other screen. It sent it to this person um, automatically. And if we click on this, that's actually gonna take them to this post because what I said inside the DM, if I go back to it is, um, if you would like a free copy of the client getting school community checklist, drop the word school on the post link below and I'll send it to you. So I've just set up this feature actually, just, just today. And it basically says that again there. And then what people do is they drop school here and then I'm able to reach out and, and send them that resource and continue that conversation. So it's a very neat nurturing trick, so to speak. So if we come back to the settings and we go into uh, categories, plugins, uh, auto DM, edit. Again, I'll put the text below, but you'll need to hyperlink like your um, post or whatever you wanna put into this message. I would recommend following a similar strategy because it works like a dream. We've used a similar principle for many years in other communities. And you wanna basically hyperlink it back to the welcome post. So I've basically just gone to the welcome post in the community, so which is this. Um, and then I've basically gone copy link and that's what I've put in here specifically. So if I type that in, it stays the same. You can also preview it so you can see what it looks like before you send it. So every time you let someone in, that's gonna fire them off a DM. So make sure that's turned on, okay? And it'll, it'll turn green. The next thing is you can look at your metrics in here. So you can see when we started promoting it, the growth, and you can see how many members are active, etc. And so this is a nice little thing to gauge if your group is growing. Obviously you're gonna see the numbers going up, but you obviously wanna see a nice steady trend upwards. The next thing is gamification. So although you can gamify this platform, right now we've optimized not to actually um, make people unlock content because here's our thought process, right? There's a way of actually making people at level two or level three or level four only get access to specific content. And I wanna explain this principle a little bit more for you. So if I go to the members, right? Um, let's just click on this brand new member. Um, she's on level one. And what does this mean? So level one, she's got zero points. And points are essentially earned by liking, um, by getting a like, okay? So let's just say uh, Langdon posted in the community and five people liked it. Langdon would get five points and then Landon would move to level two. And so people can reach levels inside of your community. And with each level, you can actually unlock content. So if I just go back to creator and, uh, the creators and community uh, classroom section and I go in here, I can actually uh, just edit this for a second. I can actually go um, members of a certain level and I can select people that only at level two get access to this course material. So if you wanted to, you could actually gate content and stop people seeing it unless they actually engage, participate and earn points. However, I don't wanna slow people down from actually getting to consume the content inside of this community and ascend into our paid community. So I don't wanna make people work for the content personally because I don't wanna slow down that process of them being nurtured because let's just imagine this new member just comes in and 
they just want to like gorge on content, but they're not able to see any content because they need points before they can gorge on it. That's going to slow down the nurturing process, right? And I want people to be nurtured very qu quickly. So if they come into the classroom and they can see the content and they can go through it straight away, then that's going to give people um, an opportunity to uh, essentially be nurtured uh, much more quickly. Okay. And that's something that I want to be able to do uh, with my free school community and something I'd recommend you do too. So let's just go back to here and we're going to go to settings. We're now going to go into um, the next bit. So we're going to skip over gamification because we're not going to um, gamify the free school community, but we're essentially going to go into links. And this is where you can actually attach a link that is going to promote your either subscription or your paid community or it could lead people to an application to apply for your paid community. So you can see here, we've got a couple of links and this is the one that I want you to pay attention to, which is apply for inner circle. So essentially this leads people to this page where they essentially would fill out um, an application to apply for the inner circle, which is our paid community, right? Which is the community that you're in right now. So if I come back to uh, this, We've simply just put apply for inner circle, put in the link, hit save. And now this will always be here in the free school community. So the great thing about this is people are always getting exposed to that. So anyone that's coming back to this community on a regular basis is essentially going to see this. And if they see this, there's a good probability they'll click it. And if they click it, they may fill in out that application. So that makes sense. So really simple to do. Um, if you are actually wanting to just send people straight to your um, paid subscription uh, community, then you could simply just take the about section. You could grab that settings, links, edit, and you could simply go like that. And basically it would take them to this page where they would be able to like subscribe to it, so to speak. Yeah. And, and they would be able to, to, to sign up. So I'm going to cancel that. Now, those are all the settings that we need to set up inside of uh, this section here. Really simple, nothing too complicated in there. So we're going to come out of that and we're going to talk about the about section seeing as we're on it. And this is where I've simply just put a uh, logo. Okay. And you can put in additional things here as well. You can put in images, uh, you can put in screenshots of, of what's inside your community. Um, but essentially you want to have something that represents the community uh, as an image and then basically some text with some outcomes of like what someone can gain by coming into your free school community so inside you'll get access to a free course on how to start grow and monetize a school community how to build a school community from scratch a click by click build full tutorial done for you templates generate leads customers and a more profitable income with the school monetization funnel and then turn your passion, skills, and expertise um, into profits and monetize a school community over three hours worth of content. So I'm giving people uh, many compelling reasons to sign up to the community, right? Because if we go into uh, incognito, and I'll just show you what this looks like. If I just type that, this is what someone's going to see when, when they uh, click the link to join your community, right? It's going to land on this page. They're going to see this over here. They're going to see this here. And then they would essentially need to click join and enter some info in order to get access. So I want to give people a compelling reason to, to join as well. Okay. So I'm just going to come out of that and go back to this. I'm going to drop the, uh, the text of this down below. Um, if there's any updates on what we're doing here, then you'll find those uh, down below as well. But really simple setup. Um, nothing too sophisticated, but make sure you give people enough compelling reasons to join your community. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the community itself. And what we've done is we've set up two pinned posts. Okay. So I'm just going to go into my pinned post. We've tested lots of different things here. And essentially, this is what we've settled on. So we're explaining a little bit about what the community is for. So make sure that you like keep reaffirming what is the big benefit of being inside of your community specifically. And then here, um, we're pointing them to, to two places, the community and the classroom, which are going to be the main 
uh, point of calls inside of uh, this community specifically. And then here are your next steps. So I want people to comment, and this is something that we've just put in. So I want people to comment to basically unlock a bonus resource, which is this, the Client Getting School Community Checklist, okay? So I essentially wanna get people to engage. We've tried getting people to just introduce themselves into the group, and then we've tried this, and this is performing better, and it's allowing us to get into conversations with people. So we're using this, and then we're directing people to uh, choose the right path because we've got kind of two different paths depending on where someone is in, in their journey in our free school community. So if someone's like really new, they would go down one path. If they've already got an established business, they'd go another path. So we've hyperlinked people to this particular video. It's a 22 minute video. Inside of this video, it's actually going to tell people more about who we are, what we do, why we're the uh, the the authority on on this process, and then it's going to guide them to one of two paths. So you can see down below here. Option one, go here, and that's then hyperlinked to this course. Option number two, go here, and it's hyperlinked to that course. Now, if you're not inside of the um, free school community, then I'll put a link below this video so that you can join it for whatever reason you're not in there, then get in there and you can have a look. Um, this is what we've currently got in place right now. This may change because we always like to test and see what performs best right now this is the best performing strategy that we have in place um, and then underneath it you can see that we've got additional resources as well that we want to direct people to specifically okay so i'm just going to come back to this post so that's really hyperlinked via this all you've got to do is take this link okay copy this link go into here and then just click at it you would highlight it and use that button. You can hyperlink it. Okay, super simple. All right, um, and then you can see people uh, drop in school, school, school. Yeah, and that then allows us to get into conversations where we follow up and um, we send them the thing. I'll show you what one of those conversations looks like actually before I go even further. All right, so here's one of those conversations. Here's the free thing. Does it open okay for you? And we've basically... Um, sent them a PDF with, with this essentially. And now I could continue this conversation with David um, to see if like he needs some additional help, support, um, and see if he may wanna join uh, in the circle. Okay, so you can see it's a nice little simple prospecting mechanism as well that can get us into conversations with people that are showing some signs of engagement or interest. So I'm just gonna come back to this. Um, and then I'll just explain some other things. So I'm letting people know that there's a mobile app because I essentially want people to be able to consume the content anywhere, anytime, and as much of it and as quickly as possible. So I'm directing them to the, to the app. And then just some simple community guidelines. And that's it. And I've just put in a GIF. Um, if you're curious about how to do that, <laughs> you simply just go to edit and you would click on, not that, you'd click on GIF and there's a bunch of GIFs. And that's it, super simple. So I'll leave the text to this down below. The big takeaway I want to you to take away from this is, number one, get them to comment below the video so you can start conversations and you can create a resource. I'll give you, um, I'll give you a copy to that resource as well. If you want a copy to that resource, I'll give you the Canva template so you can see what I'm delivering um, and also hyperlink the next video or the first video for them to watch and then get them to download the mobile app. I think these are kind of best practices in order to get people to consume your content, get people to engage with you and start conversations so you can prospect those people to see if they may be a good fit for your paid community, okay? And then the next thing is uh, how to adjust notifications. So the notifications are pretty intense in school. So I just show people inside of this video how to adjust notifications and I've just, uh, pins that post to the top of the community. So the way that you pin the posts is you simply go into it and you click pin. Now you can pin any member post or you can pin your own post. You can pin any kind of post you want, okay? So pretty simple, pretty easy to do. And I've pinned these two. Now, um, basically it's gonna pin the last thing that you pinned to the top. So if you want this to appear at the top, you need to make sure that you pin this first and then this okay that's how you get your pinned post at the top 
All right, so that's the community section and the pinned posts set up. The next thing we're gonna dive into is the classroom, okay? So the classroom is where you're essentially gonna have uh, your content, and this is the content that you're gonna to create to essentially nurture uh, these free members that are coming into the community, discovering you, and I'll just walk you through what we're doing here. So first of all, we're just taking them through like an intro video where in this video we're setting the tone, demonstrating expertise, positioning authority, and then we're leading people to the next steps where essentially they're going to one of two paths. So we'll go into the school launch plan. Now inside the school launch plan, they've essentially got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trainings. And these are designed to give people those initial steps that they need to take to start moving in the right direction. And that's then going to create desire and demands for the next step, which is going to be in the paid community, right? And so these are super high value, but they're also creating demands for the next steps. Okay, so that's the whole principle behind it. Um, in terms of how like I've recorded these, very simple, I'm using this tool, which I'm using right now called Loom. And um, I basically created uh, some slides and presentations and videos using Loom. And then I've basically uploaded them to this um, platform by going in here, um, adding a link. So if I just get rid of that, you can essentially upload a YouTube, a Vimeo, a Loom or a Wist link. So I use Vimeo. So I go ahead and upload my videos to uh, Vimeo, which is this platform here. So I go new video, upload, I upload a video. Once that video is uploaded, I grab the link, I come over and I drop it into, into the school platform. Okay, so I'm just gonna come back here. And then these are my next steps and um, the hyperlinks, right? So I'm basically here directing people to the newsletter and exclusive updates, my Instagram and YouTube to be um, kept up to date with other pieces of content. Um, if people wanna start a school community, this is my referral link. And then also here, this is actually gonna take them back to the application. So this is a subtle place for you to put either your subscription and um, low ticket school community. So a link to the about page, or you could put an application or a call booking link in there too for your paid community like we're doing. And then again, I'm encouraging people to download the mobile app, okay? So really simple, very easy to add the content and basically edit the text and hyperlink it super super simple um, and also you can add uh, resources so if i come in here i could go uh, add resource file i could go ahead and go into canva for example and uh, let's just go into this design i could go here copy link back here paste it type in canva go add and then it can add the resource and boom Nice and simple way of like um, hyperlinking any resources that you want to include. So I'm just gonna delete that. And that's basically how you add course materials. Um, as well, um, you would need to come in here and, and put, put these sets in and then these modules. So the way to do that is you go um, add module. Uh, actually, no. What I'm gonna start with is add set. So the set is the this, so I'm just gonna put um, mod your two, and then you'll see it will create another one of these. And then there I can go add module in set, and then I can come in here and I can edit this, and I can build in multiple modules here, okay? Really simple to do. Uh, I'm just gonna get rid of this, because we don't want it. Super simple, and delete that. Super simple. Another thing you can do as well is if you wanna move things around, you can just do that, okay? Super easy, I love it. All right, so that's the um, course section um, or an example of it. And it's really simple, right? You just come in here, you type in the name. So let's just say, uh, start here. Put in a description here. So I'll just put X, 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 description. You would upload like a cover um, let's just see if I've got an example. Yeah, so here's a here's a cover example. I'm just gonna I made this on um, Canva. I'm just gonna upload that, save, and then I'm gonna leave the setting. All members have access. I'm gonna go start, and then if I come out, 
you can see here, it's there. And then I can move this if I wanted to like that to there. So I'm just gonna delete that. Uh, and then you can just see what I've got in place here. So we've got the school launch plan and the school monetization funnel after the start here section. And then I've got um, this, which is more information about our uh, paid community. So anytime that I'm talking about our paid community inside of the uh, free community, I'm actually adding in that post here so people can kind of fast track their understanding about our paid program via um, via this kind of classroom section as well. So like another subtle way of promoting our paid program because if you look at the end, application to, uh, to apply, okay? All right, so that's the classroom section. Um, the next thing I wanna show you is the calendars and this is the calendar section. Now you may decide to run a call in the free community or not, that's entirely up to you. I'm gonna share with you what we've decided to do though. So what we've done is, you can see right now we've got some calls in here. We've got this call, we've got this call, and we've got this call. Again, I made these on Canva, super simple to make. Um, but notice when you click on these, it says school build Q&A with Alex, inner circle members call apply via the link. So this then actually takes them to the link. So let's just say in your paid community, you're running Q and A calls, um, trainings, whatever, live trainings. You can actually um, put the schedule in the free community to subtly promote the paid community. So if I go um, to the paid community, you can see those same calls here. So I've put them in here and I've put them in the free community because I want clients to be aware of these but I also want people um, in the creators and community community to be aware of them in our free community because then it's gonna create demand for these inside of our paid community. So I'm just gonna go back to the free community. So we're in here right now, and this is a cool thing, right? Notice if you're in the community section, it says school build with Alex coming up. Someone clicks on that because they're curious. It's basically gonna take them to a link here to apply for Inner Circle. So this is just a nice subtle way of getting people to fill out applications, or you could essentially send people to your about page on your subscription community and drive traffic from the free community without you having to lift a finger. They simply just see it in the community. And every time a call is coming up, someone's not necessarily gonna know how it works, right? They come into the free community. Oh, there's a call coming up with Alex. Hey, I wanna jump on that and speak to Alex. Oh, how do I uh, access it? Oh, I need to go here. Oh, this is an application. Now they can actually fill out that application and that can generate as applications by someone just being curious to wanna get on a call. And maybe they don't fill it out straight away, but they're gonna to continue to see the calls being promoted inside of the free community about the paid program. And that's gonna create that more de uh, more desire, more demand, and essentially send people nicely into the, into the paid community, all right? So there you have it. We've covered um, everything when it comes to really setting up your free community with success and, um, and the right strategy. There's gonna be some resources down below and, and maybe some additional things for you, for you to go through. So definitely check those out and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson.